in an old house. The dead and the living are equally at home. In this story from my new book, Early Dark, Marlon Honeycutt gets along with them all. Kitchen music. The sound of children's voices woke Marlon Honeycutt from the deepest sleep he could remember. Not that his memory was that great since the accident. Ethel wanted to drive on that rainy night. Macular degeneration had left his vision about as spotty as his memory, but Marlon insisted he was fully capable of getting them to the concert in one piece. As usual, Marlon got his way. He could recall now with excruciating clarity the headlights of the semi hurtling at them out of the fog. He could hear the blare of the horn, the screech of tires against pavement, or maybe it was Ethel screaming. After that, just a long nothing. Marlon couldn't remember the crash or the ambulance ride through the weeping dark to the hospital. He couldn't even remember how long they'd kept him there or when they brought him home. Since then, he'd been alone in this dark old house. For how long? Seasons? Maybe years. But after all that time, he was still here, and children, not his children, were singing in his kitchen. He and Ethel had never had children of their own, and if they had, theirs would be long gone and gone by now. Marlon wasn't surprised to find strange children in his kitchen, neither was he alarmed. There'd been a lot of strangeness in the house lately, shadowy movements glimpsed in passing, lights going on and off in vacant rooms, murmuring in the nights and sometimes in the day that might be either wind or voices. The realtor warned them when they bought the house that it was rumored to be haunting, that the previous owners had been convinced they weren't alone in it. Ethel said she looked forward to meeting her resident ghosts, but after moving in, they never heard nor saw any. In all their years together there, not a peak or a peep from mysterious unbodied presences. However, in his time since, alone in the still and the silence, Marlin had indeed witnessed things contrary to ordinary. The solitude might be playing tricks on his brain, he thought. Or maybe there just wasn't enough life left in him now to keep ghosts at bay.